What's up people, Dobbs Woods is right here, and welcome to the second part of the Resident Evil rank video. Well, we already done from number 24 all the way up to number 11. Do you guys agree? I think I agree to myself because it's my opinion. These Some of these some of the ones that I've ranked lower, you may disagree and you think they're your favourites. I understand that. Remember, it's my opinion. We're doing the five senses, like I said. The story, the looks, the controls, the soundtrack and the feel. So, with that being said... Let's keep going. We're on number 10. Moving our way up to number 1. Let's have a look what is number 10. Number 10, it is Resident Evil Outbreak 2. Way better number number 1. And my god, they really did pull it out of their backside to make this sequel so much better. And it's a rare, it's a rare version game as well. It's quite expensive and it's quite rare to find in the wild in the United Kingdom. It was hard for me to find it. I've only found it twice and that was it. Um story pretty much follows after resident evil outbreak one which is good it was nothing really um it was no new characters it's pretty much the same characters from the last one which is good it looked like resident evil as it has been and the same thing for number and the feel <sighs> controls were way better even though the inventory was still a problem i understand that and the soundtrack not a lot of soundtrack to be honest but when there is it's good now, the main thing though, why is this a lot, lot higher than the uh, original one that was number 19? Because they finally put freaking animals as zombies. Freaking zombie tigers, zombie lions, a freaking zombie elephant. Oh my god, what a shout out for that. I never thought they'd do that. Because yes, we've had snakes, we've had dogs, we've had wolves, we've had freaking sharks but my god we never had a fuck off elephant before that's a first or a lion that's awesome to be honest because i thought they were going to do that for resident evil 5 but they didn't they only put crocodiles in it which was the biggest disappointment ever anyhow let's go to number nine number nine is resident evil 2 remake now a lot of people say this is one of the best ones they made because resident evil 2 was one of the best games that were made the main reason is because to me it felt like they could have done way more work into it. I know it was mainly because it was an upgraded graphics and everything so they couldn't go ahead and control everything that you could do in the old one and put it in. I know they had to shrink it down. I understand that. But my god they could have done something to the freaking city. You could only go in the city for like at least five minutes and then straight into the police station. For God's sakes, man, you could have done way b better than that. You could have definitely gone into the city way more than that. But you couldn't. That was a bummer. But either way, the story was solid. It was just like the original with a little bit of extra touch into it. I did like it. You get to have a bit more story relationship with Will Smith. I know it's not Will Smith, but we, everybody in the Resident Evil community, we always call him Will Smith. Um, you get to go in the orphanage, which was good. Um, um, Sherry Birkin was more interesting. William, Wer um, William Birkin was more in depth as well. Same thing for the mother. Um, Ada Wong was more mysterious. I really did like her in this a lot more than in number two, the original. But my god, they definitely did pull it out of the bag. But to me, though, I still think they could have done a lot more work into it and add more areas. To That's in my opinion. But like I said, it felt like it. Controls were fantastic. Soundtrack was ace. It's literally, what can you not hate about Resident Evil 2 Remake? It was freaking amazing. Number eight, Resident Evil The Umbrella Chronicles. Now this is the first time ever they thought to make Resident Evil into a rally shooter game. And fuck me, that was amazing. It was the best idea they ever got. Because what I've, well, this is the thing though. I read documents before this game was made that they were getting homage and ideas for one of my favourite shooter games of all time, House of the Dead. And oh my god, that felt like a privilege to me because I love House of the Dead. And they were going to go ahead and make a House of the Dead version of Resident Evil. My head exploded with joy because I was looking forward to it. And when it came out, oh my god, it was absolutely what I wanted. It was awesome. The story was straightforward. The Umbrella Chronicles was about Resident Evil 0, 1 and 3 with a bit of Ada Wong's story, a bit of Wesker's story and a little bit if you beat the whole entire game you get a special game story about Chris and um, 
about Chris and Jill going ahead and going after Wesker and these other experiments of a new tyrant, which was awesome to be honest. The look, it looked like Resident Evil. Did it feel like a Resident Evil game? No, of course it not. It's a shooters. It's a first person shooter, but it's a rally game. So of course it didn't feel like it didn't feel like a Resident Evil game. But my god it looked like it. Uh, soundtrack was great. It was good. It felt like a Resident Evil. It felt like a Resident Evil soundtrack that I would listen to, hundred uh, percent. The controls. Now, controls can be very, very clunky sometimes. It depends on what console you used. Um, the PS3 version, I did not like the controls at all, but the Nintendo Wii version was so much better and it was much more fluent. Um, Pretty much healing was a bit of an issue because I like to, to store them but you can't do anything about it because it was their first time doing a rally shooter game for Resident Evil. But still, it was definitely a rounding success in my eyes. That's why it's number 8. Number 7 is its sequel, Resident Evil The Dark Side Chronicles. Pretty much following Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil Code Veronica X and also freaking a new, new, new story. Oh yes, what a story it is, and it's so freaking good. The story overall, besides the Resident Evil 2 story and also Code Veronica Corrects' story, the old one with Leon S. Kennedy and Krauser was amazing to be honest. It was like a new zombie outbreak and everything, it was good. It was pretty much a story before Resident Evil 4, which was Im impressive to be honest. Because we wanted to know what happened between Wesker and uh, Krauser. Uh, the look looked like a Resident Evil game. And once again, it didn't feel like a Resident Evil game. Because it was a rally game, like I said. But the controls were ten, ten times better. Ten, 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 ten times better. Soundtrack was awesome. Do I think it's better than the original? I don't think so. But overall it's definitely a good resounding 8.5 out of 10 for the soundtrack for dark side chronicles umbrella chronicles was definitely a 10 for me but oh my god though they definitely pulled it out of the bag for this one for a sequel because you could finally store your weapons you could store your hp you could store your your grenades they pretty much pulled it out of the bag for a sequel and it worked way better and my god i'd still play it to this day as well when i'm having a chance to play on my nintendo wii now let's move on to number 6, Resident Evil 3 Remake. Now this is pretty much the latest Resident Evil game that we got and to be honest, what a game. What a freaking game. I even live streamed it with you guys so if you guys want to check out my live stream of that, definitely check it out. And oh my freaking god, it was so much fun. It was so much fun. Story, just like Resident Evil, the, re the original, definitely good. It looked like Resident Evil, it felt like Resident Evil, the soundtrack was amazing and the controls were amazing. But what was the main reason why it wasn't lower? It had the same reasons just like Resident Evil 2 Remake. They didn't put the clock tower in it. You were outside the clock tower and you couldn't go in it. That's bullshit. You can go in the hospital. That's great. You can go in the city. That's great. You went into the freaking police station for at least about 20 to 30 minutes and that was it. I was furious with that. I was not happy. Pretty much though, I was extremely happy that they showed um, um, Brad turning into a zombie. That is awesome because I was happy they did that. Because they did that in Resident Evil 2 if you got to the police station quicker in the original. So that was a good little homage to that type of, um, to that, to be honest. But now let's move on to number five. Number five, Resident Evil 2, the original. Now you can't go wrong with the original. I know the fixed cameras, they're clunky. You can't go wrong, you can't blame it, it's a PS1 game. It felt like Resident Evil. It looked like Resident Evil. The story was fantastic. All the characters were great. The puzzles were good. Mr. X is awesome. William Birkin is awesome. The soundtrack was awesome. There's nothing wrong with it. To be honest, there was nothing really wrong with that game at all, except for the clonkiness. That's why it's a little bit low. Um, that's why it's not number one. So that's the main reason at all. I can't really explain what else about it. It's just a fantastic game. And if you guys have not played the original Resident Evil 2, definitely play it. Definitely have a try, try and find the PS1 version 
or get an emulator, get the PC version, whatever you can find, just play it and have a hell of a ball with it. Now let's go ahead and move on to number four. Resident Evil 7. Number number four is Resident Evil 7. Now this is when fixed cam enough yeah when it's um, fixed cameras are out of the window. It's first person on VR. Wow! That is good. And even if you haven't got a VR, you can play it without VR. Either way, it's still great. There's no zombies, but it felt like Resident Evil. Even though it was like some sort of fungus, um, um, some sort of fungus virus, which was great. Soundtrack. Did it need a soundtrack? I don't think it didn't. It didn't need a soundtrack at all. It had a little bit on and off when it needed to. When it needed to, the the quietness of the game, the it was just literally perfect because you were in like some like really grotty house and everything this like little tiny manor and to be honest though the only thing i'd say that the best thinking soundtrack of it was go tell aunt Rody. that song made it way good and it had you like literally talking about it gets my my hairs up on end because it's that freaky the song and if you guys have not heard that song at all definitely watch it i'll put a link in the in the description or on the um on the card here to uh, my um trailer to Resident Evil 0 when I was doing a lip syncing video of it. It's very good in my eyes. <laughs> um, but overall though, the controls were awesome. It had all the elements that I wanted it to be a Resident Evil game and it was mwah, perfect. But what is number 3, 2 and 1? Well, number 3 is Resident Evil 1 the remake on the GameCube and other consoles. What an improvement and the first ever time you get to witness the Crimson Heads. Oh my god, most nightmarish monsters in all of Resident Evil. They're the most terrifying creatures in all of the games. Running zombies, I hate them. I'm terrified of running zombies or you want to call them the Rages, whatever you want to call it from any type of um, film or show. The Crimson Heads tick every single box. But besides the Crimson Heads, the story was just like the original, but in more in detail and in better graphics, so you can see everybody and their face expressions. Minus the bit of the acting, the acting was still a bit wishy-washy, but Albert Wesker is still a great actor in it. Uh, Jill and Brad, um, Jill, not Jill and Brad, Jill and Barrett acting was not as good as like a, not like a, all the rest of them. Chris Redfield was good though. Um, the look looked like Resident Evil, felt like Resident Evil. Soundtrack. When there's soundtrack, it was there, it was great. When there isn't, it's perfect. When there's like a jump scare or something is barging through a window or barging through a door, that music's playing and oh my god, when that happens, you're jumping out of your freaking chair and you're screaming. And I've done that countless times in my own Let's Plays when I was doing it a long, long time ago. And like I said, the controls were way better, even though they're fixed cameras. Yeah, fixed cameras, and they worked amazingly well for it, to be honest. It was way better for what it was going to be. But that's what I've got to have to say for number three. But number two is Resident Evil 3, the original. Now, why is this a lot higher, even though the fixed cameras are not as good? To be honest, the fixed cameras were better for number three, to be honest, because you have dodging, you have barrel rolls, you have a good inventory um, collection. The story was amazing. Oh my lord, the soundtrack was awesome. It's like there's nothing else you could say about it. It's like it felt like it. It, the, it looked like it. Controls were awesome. The soundtrack, just like Resident Evil 1 remake. No music, but when there is, you get it. And the main reason is because of Nemesis. I'm petrified of Nemesis. I really am. Even in the remake, it looked quite scary. It wasn't as scary as the original, don't get me wrong. <laughs> the original Nemesis is way more terrifying. Way more terrifying. Because you do not know when he's going to pop up. And when he does, you're turning him south and you're legging it. You are not stopping around to kill him because pretty much it's super difficult to kill him anyhow. Unless you're that good at it. But for me, I'm not good at it and I'm literally running away every time when I get a chance. 
And oh my god, to be honest people, it was a good homage for Resident Evil 3 to have Nemesis in it. And having him in, in a film, being in um, Street Fighter vs Capcom, which was awesome, or Marvel vs Capcom, having him in that was awesome. It was like, literally, they paid so much homage to Nemesis, and that's why I'm saying that he's one of the best villains in all of Resident Evil. And I'm saying villain, not as a monster, because he is a villain. Now, what is number four? No, what is number one? You guys know what it is if you guys have been watching it all, all the way through it. Resident Evil 4. Now, this game is perfect for everything. Weapons were perfect. The scenery was perfect. The controls were perfect. The enemies were perfect. They looked like people, but they weren't. They were like infectious plant mutated aliens like pla uh, were called Death Plagas or the Plaga. The villains were amazing. Ada was amazing. Chris, um, Leon S. Kennedy was amazing. Wesker was amazing. Ashley Graham. Now, a lot of people don't like her, but I actually do like her. She's quite funny. Um, but to be honest, everything about it was perfect. In my eyes, were perfect. It was so good. And my God, the most scariest creature in that game, the freaking Regenerators. My God, they were terrifying. Because before you even hear, before you even see them, you hear that. <laughs> And then when you start shooting the legs, they start doing this weird run like to you. And then they start lifting up their mouths and trying to grab you like that. Oh my god, they're so terrifying. To be honest, they were like just as scary as the Crimson Heads. But they didn't really run as quick. If they ran quicker, than, if they ran the same amount of speed as the Crimson Head, they would have been my number one. But my god... All the creatures, the whole gameplay, the story, the puzzles, everything about Resident Evil 7 was Resident Evil all the way through it. Including at daytime. It made me think, at daytime it didn't feel like Resident Evil at all. It definitely did feel like Resident Evil. Because you were in a freaking forest most of the time. It was like Cabin in the Woods or Blair Witch. You did not know what was going to happen until you see a, a monster or one, one of the villagers saying, Oh fast, that's when you're. That's when the music starts playing. Because, like I said, Resident Evil, when it comes to the music, it doesn't need music all the way through it. When it needs music, it plays, and I like that because that's when you, when that music starts, that's when you know, right, something's here, something bad's gonna happen, and it does, unless you get away with it. But pretty much that's all I've got time for today, people. That's my number one favorite Resident Evil Four, and my least favorite besides Operation Co-op. It's um, maintenance three. Um, it is mercenaries three D. So, what is your favourite Resident Evil game in your eyes, and what is your least favourite Resident Evil game that you played, meaning your most, your least liked? And please let me know what you think it is, because I like to, I like to read your comments down below. I always read them. I never really block them, or you know, never, um, I never ignore them. I always like reading them. I like to have a bit of fun with you guys. And also, like I said, make sure you uh, stay tuned for another ra another ranking video whenever we get a chance. And check out if, we get, if I pop a poll for the next one. With that being said, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, comment down below, and hit the bell icon to get yourself notified when we're uploading and live streaming. With that being said, the people on the studio see you guys subscribing, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheerio!